Now in this question, it says that you jump out of an aeroplane and open your parachute after an extended period of free fall. So when you were in free fall, the only force exerting on you was the gravity force mg. Now what it says that to deaccelerate your fall, must the force exerted on you by the parachute be greater than less than or equals to your weight. Now when you open your parachute, the parachute will apply the force on you in the upward direction. Now initially your acceleration was in the downward direction, but now uh, we want that you should deaccelerate the fall. That means we want the acceleration on you should be in the upward direction and to have the acceleration in the upward direction, the net force acting on you should also be in the upward direction then only your acceleration will be in the upward direction therefore uh, we can say that the force exerted on you by the parachute this force should be greater than mg then only you will accelerate in the upward direction now if you see the options option first says that parachute can only exert force less than the weight of the skydiver this is completely wrong the parachute exerts a force exactly equals to the skydiver weight. Now, if the force are balanced, then the acceleration will be zero. So this statement is also wrong. Third statement is correct. It says that to deaccelerate after free fall, the net force acting on the skydiver must be in the upward direction. So this statement is uh, correct. Other two are wrong. So in this question, it is given that the left ventricle of the human heart expels about 0 0.070 kg of oxygenated blood straight upwards with a force of uh, 7 sorry 5.5 newton and our aim is to calculate the acceleration of the blood as it enters the aorta so uh, if you if you draw the free body diagram of blood the gravity force would be acting in the downward direction mg and the hertz pumps the blood in the upward direction with a force of 5.5 newton now uh, from here uh, we can apply the newton's second law of motion to calculate the acceleration so net force acting on the blood should be equals to mass times acceleration now net force we have this force f minus this force mg this direction we have taken positive and this direction we have taken negative y so is equals to mass times acceleration and from here a will be equals to f over m minus g now force is 5.5 newton divided by mass is 0 0.070 kg and the value of g we have 9.81 meter per second squared now you can solve it for a and from here the acceleration comes out to be as 69 meter per second squared so this is the direction for the acceleration and its magnitude we have 69. Now in this question we are given with the acceleration versus time graph for a 2 kg object that you can see here. Now our task is to draw the corresponding force versus time graph and we can assume only a single force acts on the object. Okay so here we see that the mass remains constant. So according to the Newton's second law of motion the acceleration is the net force acting on the body divided by the mass and when mass is constant acceleration is directly proportional to the net force f which in this case we have only one force so we can write acceleration will be proportional to the force f thus we can say that the shape of the force versus time graph will be same as to this acceleration versus time graph but with one change and the change is that its numerical values will going to change like here at time t equals to one second acceleration we have negative one meter per second squared right then force will be equals to mass times acceleration mass we have uh, two kgs and acceleration we have minus one so this would become minus two newton so at t equals to one the force will be uh, minus two newton similarly at t equals to two seconds the force will be six newton and so on now let, let us draw the graph so this is a graph here i will be taking the force fx and here the time 
Now at time t equals to 1, the force is minus 2 Newton. So the graph would be something like that. Then at time t equals to 2 second, the force will be 6 Newton. So straight line up to 6 like this. Then uh, we have a constant acceleration. So force will also be constant up to time t equals to 3 seconds. Then it reduces to 1. So force will reduce to 2 like that. So this will be the force versus time graph for the same object. Now in this question, it says that the rotor of a 15,200 kg heavy lift helicopter exerts a downward force of this much magnitude uh, in order to accelerate itself and its external cargo upward at 0 0.50 meters per second squared. Now what we have to find, we have to find what upward force does the external cargo exerts on the earth. Okay, so let the mass of the, this external cargo let be small m and let the mass of this helicopter be m. So the way in which we're going to proceed is, first we'll find the mass of this cargo small m and then to find the upward force that the external cargo exerts on the earth we simply we know that this force exerted will be mass times g so first we will be calculating this mass m and for that we can use the given uh, data okay so if you consider this to be the uh, the object that is the helicopter and the cargo both so the gravity force would be acting in the downward direction m plus m times g this would be the gravity force that would be acting now the helicopter exerts the downward force this much on the earth so the earth will also apply the same force in the upward direction so the force exerted on the helicopter would be in the upward direction this is 3 2 2 triple 0 Newton and the acceleration is in the upward direction with magnitude 0 0.50 meter per second squared now if you use the Newton's second law of motion here we can write that the net force acting on the object is mass times the acceleration here this mass will be the total mass the mass of the cargo plus the mass of the helicopter okay so net force we have F minus uh, M plus capital M times G is equals to M plus capital M times A now uh, from here we can write that M plus capital M is equals to F over G plus A or we can write that this small m will be equals to f over g plus a minus capital M. 3 double 2 triple 0 Newton divided by g is 9.81 acceleration is 0 0.50 minus m is 15,200 kgs and from here the mass of the cargo comes out to be as 1.6 times 10 to the power 4 kgs. Now it's very simple to find the weight force uh, W will be M times G. This is the weight force uh, due to cargo only. That is 16,000 times 9.81 and that is equals to 1.57 times 10 to the power 5 Newton. So this is the weight force of cargo. So with this magnitude the cargo will exert the force on the earth in the upward direction. Now in this question it says that we have three identical hockey pugs with different initial velocities like here pug A have the velocity to be 7 meter per second which is opposite to the direction of applied force pug B have the uh, instantaneous velocity to be 0 and here pug C we have uh, the velocity in the perpendicular direction to the force applied now uh, we need to rank these three pugs in the order of magnitude of their acceleration starting with the smallest now acceleration we know from the Newton's second law of motion acceleration we have net force acting on the object divided by the mass now here the force acting on the object is 3 Newton which is same in all three cases so F divided by now since the ball are identical so mass will be same for each and every ball so M so acceleration for these three cases will be same because force is same on each ball mass is also same 
So acceleration for pug A will be equals to the acceleration of pug B will also be equals to the acceleration for pug C. So it doesn't matter that what is the, uh, the, the, the direction of velocity, the acceleration will remain the same in each and every pug. So thus we can say that since the force acting on the pug are equal or identical, so their acceleration will also be equal. And it doesn't matter what is the direction of initial velocity. Either it is in left side zero or it is perpendicular to the force. It doesn't matter. The acceleration will be same because the net force is same and the mass is same. That's it. Nothing else. So here in this question, we are given that an object has mass 5.95 kgs and its acceleration we have this much. Now three force acts on the object. F1 is this much. F2 is this much. And our aim is to calculate the force F3. Okay, so from the Newton's second law of motion, we can write that the net force acting on the object is mass times the acceleration. And uh, from here, mass we have 5.95 kgs. And acceleration for the object, we have uh, 1.17 meter per second squared x cap plus minus 0 0.664 meter per second squared y cap. Now from here, the net force will be equals to 6.96 Newton x cap plus minus 3.95 Newton y cap. Now we know the net force and the force acting on the object, we have three forces F1, F2 and F3. So from here we can write that the net force will be equals to F1 plus F2 plus F3, right? Net force we have already cal calculated, so we can put it here. This is 6.96 x cap, then plus of minus 3.95 y cap. And we have the uh, force F1, which is this value. So 3.22 x cap and then uh, F2 we also know which is this value. So uh, minus 1.99 x cap plus 2.05 y cap and F3 we need to find so let it be F3 as it is. Now we can simplify for F3 from here. So this force F3 this will be equals to so uh, we can take these terms to the left side. So 6.96 x cap plus of minus 3.95 y cap. This as it is, then minus these values. So 3.22 x cap, then plus of minus 1.55 x cap, then plus 2.05 y cap. Further, we can write, now uh, we'll subtract x component with x component, y component with the y component. So 6.96 minus, this is 3.22, this minus and this minus would become plus. So plus 1.55 and this is x cap. Then this would be minus 3.95. This minus and this plus would become minus. So minus 2.05 y cap. And further, we'll get the force F3 to be equals to 5.29 x cap plus of minus 0.00 y cap. And the unit will be in Newton. So this is the required answer.